Hey everybody, we are going to do a uh, tutorial on Skype for Business, kind of a real overview and kind of a, all of the features that you can find in Skype for Business. Um, so first and foremost, we need to make sure that we are using Skype for Business. There are two. There's the blue background with the white emblem and there's the white background with the blue S. Skype is the the personal one so that requires a personal account and has some different features Skype for business this is the business education enterprise account and that's the one that we're going to use so we are I'm logged into my Skype for business account and usually you'll end up on this first page where you get your groups um, where you can type in and find people that you want to connect with um, so for example a difference between Skype for business accounts and personal accounts. Personal Skype accounts are like this one. It starts with live. Um, a business account generally just is tied to your office account, so your district's email. Um, so if I type in a colleague in my find button, um, it's going to find them as a colleague that's within my contact list for my Outlook Office 365 account and they don't have live in front of their name. You can connect to people outside that have a live connection and then type in their live account. They'll have to send that to you. We have our settings button that allows us to go in and kind of personalize and what's going on here. So you can use the audio device to make sure that your audio device and microphones are working. Video, you can select what video is being played there. Um, currently it's not showing up because I'm recording this and it's currently in use. To start a Skype meeting, you have a couple of options. If you go to the calendar, if you set up a calendar meeting in your Outlook calendar, you can find these meetings right here. Then you just click and join that meeting. Or you can hit meet now and then invite participants. Um, if you're working within a an education or enterprise it's probably easier just to set up that meeting ahead of time and then invite people in um, and that's as easy as being within your um, Outlook go to your calendar and then within your calendar right at the top you should see new Skype meeting now if you do not see this icon here you go to File, Options, go down to Add-ins, down by Com Add-ins, hit Go, and you should find Skype for Business, Skype Meeting right here. If that's unchecked, check it, and then that will show up in your calendar. So that's how you make sure that's there if you don't currently see that. And then for setting one up, you just click on that. It's just like scheduling a regular meeting. Type in the title, who needs to go, and they're going to get this join code that they can just click on. So, a couple ways to start your meeting. Um, I'm just going to go to meet now and start a call. Now, I will be the only person on this call. But here we have, um, on the left, you're going to get your participant list, which you can close this at any point in time and open it through this button here. You can invite more people at the bottom left corner. You can also invite more people in the top right corner. You also in the participant list have participant actions where you can mute the whole audience. You can turn off instant messaging. Um, you can turn off everybody's video, hide names. Everyone can be participating as an attendee so there's no one person that's in control. And you can go to invite people by email as well if they're having trouble to get on. So if I close this, we'll get our full screen here. <clears throat> when you're at the bottom, these are your main buttons. So the microphone will be blue like the video. But again, I'm recording this in another platform, so that's why mine is off. Video, If even though it's blue, your video is not turned on until you click start my video. So if you need your video to show up, you must click start my video. And again, mine will not currently work because I'm recording in another platform. The red button is to end a call. And then if you are leading 
um, or really within the business platform, you have the ability to share content. You can share your entire desktop. You can share a specific window. So if I hit share a window, it'll let you go in and select what window that you have open that you can share so that you don't have to share your whole desktop if you only need to work on like one specific window that you have currently open. If you're doing a lot of work, you can share your entire desktop. You can share PowerPoint files, so you can open up an, uh, a clean PowerPoint. So if I do this, and go in and select a PowerPoint, now depending on what's involved in your PowerPoint, sometimes this takes a lengthy bit of time to load as it's uploading it and then opening it. So if it's a longer PowerPoint, lots of slides, it'll take a little bit longer to upload. One thing you can do before you start a call is get that uploaded and then it'll be under manage content. And if it's already uploaded here and then you click the share button, kind of can speed up the process when you're working on um, in the middle of a meeting so you don't have to wait for it to load like I currently am. As that's loading, you can also let others co-author a document so you can open up a shared document and both parties or multiple parties can be working on that shared document and viewing that shared document at the same time. You can add attachments, shared notes. Um, again, manage that content. When the content comes up, it's called a stage where you can actually hide that stage and then go back to kind of the gallery view of seeing everybody. Under the more tab, there is a whiteboard, poll, and Q&A, and I will get to those shortly after this PowerPoint decides to load. You have an instant messenger chat feature, unless you turn that off, which you can turn that off. So this is your running conversation that you can have with everyone in the meeting. So if I say hello to everybody, that will load. We have, you can attach files, you can attach links and emojis into that chat session. And when you're done, that chat, chat session will actually be emailed to you. So you can close and open that with these buttons, just like the participant list here. So here's a PowerPoint that loaded up. Um, you can click through your PowerPoint slides that you've already done. In the upper right-hand corner, you have annotations. So you can actually annotate your PowerPoint as you're putting on a presentation as well. So you've got pen tools, select a color. You can select the line size. Um, you have highlighting tools, erasers, you can put in arrow stamps, checks, X's if you're kind of just working with someone about what's good and adjusting. You have standard drawing tools, arrows, rectangles. You can also insert a picture and um, as you're working on those pieces. So you can do quick annotations during a presentation to highlight um, selected areas of your presentation so and that's we'll stay with those slides and we'll send you those notes later so if I stop sharing that PowerPoint it's going to go back to this main thing which says hide the stage again the stage is what's being shared <clears throat> so again back to more whiteboard so if you're working with a class or you need to have a wide space just to work with on a whiteboard, you now have an entire screen that you have a whiteboard feature for. Um, again, you have the arrow to move things around. You have a text box if you need to type. Your writing features, drawing features, um, an image. So if you're teaching and you want to do a diagram up here and then take annotations on that diagram to help students, you can move and adjust the size of your diagrams that are in the window. And then you can annotate over top of those as well. So you can draw those, those paths on there. There we go. So you can annotate over top of, of diagrams. You can put text boxes in and, and move these things around. Um, Another nice feature is on the three dots, the more options here. When you have a whiteboard space open, of course, you can select all, undo, copy, cut, but <clears throat> you can clear so you can get rid of all the annotations. You can save this as a picture 
or if you're connected to your office account you can actually send the annotations on this whiteboard to a OneNote page that you may have for um, your team or your class so another really nice feature <clears throat> um, again with under that more tab we have polling questions or Q&A so polling questions um, it's going to stop sharing this whiteboard and it's going to let me type in a poll question so you name it you can put your question in and then put your choices in when you hit create it will stop sharing what's there and now this is shared with everybody here's a poll and then as people um, this pops up on the screen and as they enter um, their choices you know you'll get a running tally over here of what their choices are and you there is a choice for people not to vote you have some actions that you can tool do you can open the poll close it right now the results are hidden from attendees so you can let that go without everyone seeing the results and at the end if you need to you can show it to them uh, you can edit the choice and questions as you're going clear all the results and then save the poll results as well so lots of options within there when you're doing a poll and if we do a Q&A and it again will open up a Q&A session where it's basically your IM full screen um, so you can have these things going you can toggle back and forth between your presentation and a Q&A so as you're presenting you can have your your Q&A going um, at the same time and again this will save and, and, and ask so attendees can only ask questions um, if you want everyone to be able to answer back and forth like an actual IM that's where in um, that participant button you would make everybody um, an attendee that put makes you an attendee so everybody can can uh, answer questions so so here's where I have that Q&A open and I open that presentation back up so I can have my presentation going it can be annotating at the same time while the question and answer session is going on as well so you can kind of jump back and forth um, with what's happening you can do all that right within the instant message window here and see them side by side but if you wanted a different look at that you can do the, the Q&A session completely up to you so there's some additional features within um, the platform that you can do when you're using that for distance learning or business meetings um, you'll be able to have access to all this when you have all participants um, taking place in the meeting um, if their videos are on you will see two rows the top row will have up to five participants in a much larger window those will be your five most active participants and underneath that will be smaller windows with everybody else's icons that are part of that call you can at any point click on someone on the bottom row and bring them to the top row so that they are in larger view um, and you can see what's happening or what's going on with them you have the ability to record your session as well right within Skype and for us anyways that goes when it's all done and processed it goes into a folder called my links which is L Y N X and that works for our our company our school district and you've got font size and different meeting entry and agendas that you can work on there to end the meeting you can end it over here or you can just hang up the phone call to end the meeting so that's Skype for business in a nutshell with a kind of a full tutorial of the different aspects of Skype for business um, thanks for watching hope everybody's doing well have a good day